Hello everybody, thanks for joining me today. I'm Jackie and I create mosaics using sea glass. And today I'm gonna to show you how to make a small sea glass hummingbird. So if you joined me for my last video, you would have seen me make a small eight inch by eight inch mosaic. Never usually go that small. Well, today I'm gonna to go even smaller. I'm really challenging myself. So I have a five by seven frame and I'm going to make a small hummingbird on this frame. And hummingbirds, you might ask, why do I wanna make a hummingbird? I'm amazed by hummingbirds. Where our cottage is, we have a ton of wind. And those hummingbirds will be at the hummingbird feeder and they'll be flapping away and they're not perturbed at all by the wind. And it just amazes me that they don't get blown so away. So the other thing that really amazes me about hummingbirds is how far they can fly without stopping to eat. Cause they start in Mexico and they fly all the way to the Maritimes without stopping to eat. And then they get here here, and they have to eat and eat and eat and eat all summer long so that they have enough weight, body weight, to carry them all the way back to Mexico. They leave here around mid-August, early September, so they eat all summer long. And if they don't have enough food, they're not going to be able to make the trip back. And they, are, they have lots of sources to eat, but they really like the hummingbird feeders. And I find that when they're at the hummingbird feeder, if the nectar gets low in the hummingbird feeder and they see me walking around the kitchen they'll sit there outside the window well they'll not sit there they'll fly there and they'll buzz 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 and looking at me as if to say get over here and fill this hummingbird feeder it's a riot anyway so to make this project what we need is a five by seven frame for this one what I've done is I've put the silicone bead all the way around the back of it in order to secure the glass in and that's set so my frame is ready to go. You need a pattern. I What I did was I drew a picture of a hummingbird and some flowers, some grass and stems. And if you're interested in getting a downloadable version of this pattern, I have it on my website, JackieTrimperSeaGlass.com. You can go there to get that pattern or you can draw your own. You'll need green sea glass. I use green small pieces. You're working small, so use small pieces of sea glass. So I'm going to use green for the grass and the stems of the flowers. Brown sea glass. I'm going to use brown for the silhouette of the hummingbird. I've got a bunch of white sea glass and what I've done is I've picked out a number of my white triangles because I like to use triangles for flowers. So I'm making flowers because the hummingbird is at the flower bed getting the, um, all the nectar and whatnot from the flowers. And I've got, a, I've got a beautiful blue piece here, aqua blue piece for the center of one of the flowers. And I've got some other blue pieces for accent colors. And you'll need tape to tape your pattern to the frame. You'll need your craft tweezers, especially working with small bits of sea glass. It's really helpful to have the craft tweezers. And I have these little wooden skewers that I use to clean up any messy bits. My silicone, kitchen and bath adhesive caulk. That's what I use for my glue. And lastly, you'll need some hanging hardware. So I have my little hooks to put into the back of the frame and the hanging wire to put on once it's finished. So let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is flip my frame over and put my pattern on the back. I find when you've got a fussy little shape, it's really important to have a pattern. Sometimes you might be tempted to go free flowing on things, but for something like trying to get a shape like a hummingbird, I know I want my pattern on the back and then I can follow the line of the pattern in lining up my sea glass in order to get that shape. So I'm going to start with my hummingbird. Oh, didn't get that taped quite enough. It's going to slip out of place. If it slips out of place, my lines might be wrong. So I've got the hummingbird here. I've got the outline all drawn of the hummingbird. And I have a pile of small brown sea glass. So I'm going to fuss around with my sea glass. This could take a while. I find when you're working with a small space, you can work for a long time trying to find just the right pieces. And it may seem kind of fussy, but in the end, trust me, it is well worth it. 
when you get that shape and it really does look like a silhouette that you're trying to achieve, it is well worthwhile. I'm going to have to look, see, can, you can see the beak of the hummingbird is really pointy. So I'm going to have to search around here for some very pointy pieces. What I'm probably going to end up doing here, because the beak is so pointy, there's a fairly good one right there actually. And then at the very end, I think what I'll do is I'll take a piece like this and put it on end like that. There's a good one right there. So to, yeah, that makes the beak really pointy. So then I'll take a tiny bit of silicone and put it at the peak. Sometimes it's good in a fussy spot like this to do the fussiest bits first. And the hummingbird's beak is definitely the fussiest spot. So that silicone will take a few minutes to set. So that gives me some time to poke around at all the pieces to make sure they're lined up just right. And then I'm going to let it set for a while before I start working on the rest because I don't want to knock any of those little pieces out of place. So now for the flowers. One of the things that you want to do in a piece like this is have a really special piece for the center of the flower that the hummingbird is getting nectar from. And I have this amazing aqua blue piece that's going to be the center of that flower. So even though the hummingbird is the focal point, the flower is the star, or the center of the flower is the star because that piece of sea glass is just amazing. The other thing that I've done with my white sea glass here, I haven't just grabbed my tray of white sea glass. What I've done is sorted through and picked out a bunch of white triangles. And then I'm going to use only white triangles to make flowers. And I'm planning to make five flowers or part flowers, but this one is the biggest and it's the center, centerpiece. So I've got great big triangles for this one big flower. And then I want to have a part flower up here in the corner. So I'm only going to have a few pieces of sea glass for that. And I want to have three more tiny ones. So I'm looking at I'm going to pick out my tiniest bits for this one over here. I think this will be my tiniest one. And as you can see, when you've got your triangle pieces just sitting there, it's quite easy to put together sweet little flowers. I like to get pieces that are roughly the same shape. But if you're, you know, in nature, flowers, none of the petals are the exact same size and shape. So they don't have to be perfect and they still will tend to come together and fairly then good. And I think over in this corner, I'm only going to do a part flower. So then I can use the more long skinny pieces. And so it's like it's just coming off the side of the frame. So to get some blue accents in, I have some blue pieces that I'm going to use for the center of each flower. These are really tiny blues in the center of the other flowers. 
but when that's hanging in the window, that little blue bit is just going to shine. And the other thing I'm going to do is put in a nuckshuck down here in the corner in blue. And then that's going to give me enough of a blue accent for this tiny little sea glass piece. So you can see by picking out all of my sea glass pieces ahead of time, I can do this part fairly quickly. Now just to glue them so on. So my flowers are all glued on and I've let them set overnight so that now I can put in the stems and the grasses without having to worry about the flowers getting knocked out of place. So if you can see here, I've got lines drawn for a stem for each flower. So one, two, three, four, five stems. And then I've got a few blades of grass that I'm going to put in as well. So what I've done is I've arranged my green sea glass so that I only have tiny little pieces right here in front of me. Because for this part, you're not going to want to use big pieces. It's going to be really tiny pieces of green to make little blades of grass and stems. And I've got enough to pick from here so that I can pick and choose which ones I want to use but not so many that it's going to be a really long drawn out process of trying to find just the right pieces of green. So if you'll notice here, what I've done is turned quite a few of the pieces on end like this and then just put a tiny bit of silicone along the end and stood them up because it helps make those blades of grass appear really fine and thin, which I think has a really nice effect when it's against all of the other larger, chunkier sea glass pieces, especially that flower there, which is a bit of a focal point secondary focal point to the hummingbird, I think. So what I'm going to do is let this set for a bit and then I will attach the hanging hardware. Put that last little piece right there. Um, for the hanging hardware for this, I have two little round hooks that I will attach on the back on either end up here and then a piece of hanging wire and I'll just hang the wire like this and this is light enough to hang on a cup hook in the window and then the sun will shine through it and it will look quite lovely. You may also notice that the lines of the pattern aren't exact with my sea glass pieces and I don't think that's going to matter. You'll see when I take the paper off that it should be fine. I can do that right now actually and give you an impression of what it looks like without those distracting lines of the pattern in the back. And I think it works quite well. So I hope you found this really helpful. Stay tuned for a picture of this hanging in the window. I will get it hanging for you and let you see it. So until next time, happy sea glass hunting! Mm -hmm.